a very big welcome to everyone and I hope you're all well. Today I am doing week three of my one sketch challenge and if you have been following you know that I've taken one sketch and I'm making four different layouts out of it just by rotating this sketch clockwise. So now this is the third rotation and it's a layout all about my mum. So the first thing I did was I went through my stash of papers just trying to find papers that went well with this photo of her as well as photos that I thought would represent her. So I was mainly looking for flowers and purples and lavenders because mum loves lavender. It's her favourite plant, it's her favourite perfume. You buy anything with lavender smell to it, she's going to love you. For this layout I will be matching the photos twice. First on this, this lovely sort of it's like a dark beige cardstock and the second matte will be a pinky corally colour, if that makes any sense. Whenever I feel that I want my matte around my photos to be exactly the same all around, I will use my Perfect Layers ruler. They just do such a perfect job of that. I finally decided to use this lovely paper from Fab Scraps. It's called Lady Pearl and it's a lovely mauve colour and it was absolutely perfect for my mum. I just thought it brought out the photos but at the same time it really represented who she is to me. I then saw this lovely paper. It was also from Fab Scraps and it's called Antique Rose and for some reason the, the wood grain effect of it reminded me of my grandma and also my great grandma who both lived in this lovely sort of log cabin because mum's from the country and it just brought them to mind so I went with that paper as well as a symbol of my mum's mum as well as my mum's grandmother. I cut another strip of the antique bros and that's the one that's going diagonally behind my mum. If it's a layout about my mum it definitely has to have lavender and this paper from Fab Scraps again is called Lady Evelyn and it's got lots of lovely little lavender flowers and I just had to use it. I've rediscovered a new found love for my cuddle bug lately and I've been using this particular dye quite a bit. Since rediscovering my cuddle bug I had to do a bit of spending and I fell in love with these dyes from close to my heart. These dyes are the best of quality. I will actually leave a link in the description for anyone that's interested in getting a set of these dyes. The fringing one that I've used on this video is absolutely the best. It made fringing so much easier. Just use my cuddle bug, run it through, and I got the most lovely fringe you could imagine, all evenly cut, absolutely perfect. So if you want to purchase some of these dyes, they all come in a set. I will leave a, leave a link to um, Heather's Close to My Heart online, online shop and I'm sure she will be more than happy to help you. Since purchasing my ATG gun, I'm absolutely in love with it. I only wish I'd got it earlier. Off camera, I did trim down my Lady Pearl paper, that lovely mauve colour, just a little bit around all four sides. I think I only trimmed about two or three mils on um, each side. And I did mount it onto this lovely uh, corally pink cardstock, the same as the second match that I used on my photo. I'm just going to be adding some gesso to my paper. This is some clear gesso from Art Basics. It's by um, Prima Finibe. And the reason I'm doing this is because I will be doing some mixed media. And at this point in time, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to use a lot of watercolours or what. So just to protect my page, I'm adding the gesso. It is at this point that I realise I don't really like the layout. I love the papers because the papers I picked on the fact that they all represented something about my mum, you know, the lavender, the flowers, the, the wood grain of my grandma's cottage, etc. But they didn't really all belong together because they're not all from the one collection. And sometimes that actually works, but in this case it wasn't working for me. So what I did was I got my white gesso and I just started dry brushing it everywhere. And because I had the clear gesso underneath it, it just gave it this softer look and I really, really liked it. It gave it this sort of um, ethereal feel to it. It was just amazing. I, In the end, because of this, I really just liked how it just brought everything together. Everything just 
blended in so well after adding this step. You might not agree with me, but I re in real life, it, it's stunning. I'm now going to be doing some stenciling, and this is a Tim Holtz stencil, and it's, I'm not sure what it's called, but I absolutely love it. I thought it had that old world feel about it. Uh, for some reason, it reminded me not so much of my mum, but of her mum, and I'm not sure what aspect of this reminds me of my grandma, but it does, and that's why I went with it, and I'm just using some modelling paste, put it, adding it on in random spots. I love this authentic paper. It's six years old. It's been in my stash for way too long, but I only use this little bit of it, the beautiful. I just cut out that banner and I uh, stick it next to my mum. This little chest that I've cut out from one of my numerous papers has been floating around my craft desk for quite a while, so I am glad to finally use it on this layout. And the reason why I put it on this layout is because mum came all the way from South America to Australia and I just thought that that was a good representation of her and where she came from and where my heritage is from so I I just had to add it there like I said this layout is all about my mum and I tried to use things on it that represented her now this lovely mum sign that you see here I actually cut that on my silhouette and I cut it on cardstock four times and just glued all the pieces together so it was nice and thick a layout about my mum would not be complete without flowers so I ransacked my huge stash of flowers and I couldn't find anything the right colour so that's not a problem I decided I would use what I had and I'm just adding some distress ink and the colour I believe is sponge sugar of course the flowers were now looking too pink can you believe it so I'm toning down the pink by adding a bit of the distress oxides in the colour shaded lilac so I did the same process as before and uh, yeah, just painted it on and then I add a bit more pink and I played with my flowers till I got them just right. My final step on these flowers is to just add some dry gesso onto it, just with a dry brush and that just helps it to blend in with the rest of the papers. To finish off these flowers, I'm just going to add some enamel dots in the center and these are lovely and pink and very glittery, but they were perfect for this layer. I'm just going around the edges of the paper with a dry brush and adding some of this lovely Starlight's metallic paint. It's called Dried Rose and this just adds a hint of shine around the edges. And I will be doing this exact same technique around all the edges of all the papers that I've put on this layout. For a bit of pop and a bit more texture to my layout, I'm just using some gel medium here and I'm sticking down some of these lovely art stones. They're quite lightweight, they're not actually heavy and they just add just that extra texture, something different to the layout. So I basically just add these art stones just where the flowers are, cascading down and some just there by the, um, the photo of my mum with me and my two kids. Finally working on the title soon and I'm going to emboss the title. The title is just very simple, My Mum. And I'm going to emboss it with the, if it's, it's a teal embossing colour. Now the, I am going to admit that this poor title of My Mum has, I've changed colour so many times. I had it in pink, I had it in purple, I had it in so many different colours. But in the end I went with teal because it matched the jumper that she is wearing. I'm not sure why, but as I'm editing this video, the My Mum title is looking very blue. But it's not, it's, I, trust me, it's actually a greeny turquoise teal colour, whatever you want to call it. And it looks quite good. But anyway, you can see that in the still photos if you stick around. Well, I never thought I'd be getting to the end of this video, but here we are. Just the finish, finishing touches now. And all I'm doing here is I'm trying to distinguish between all the different papers and so I'm using a watercolour pencil to go around the outlines of the, um, the papers and then I will activate it with a water brush. I will confess that this layout did take me a considerable amount of time, uh, almost a day because I would stop, I'd come back, you know, it, it was in batches. 
but I am happy with the end result for there was a time there where I thought no I hate it but I persevered and in the end I was happy with the outcome I did try my best to keep the video as short as possible considering how much work I had put into this layout so I hope you're happy with the end result anyway leave me a comment if you have any constructive criticism I am willing to take it on board thank you so much and till next time Wishing you all the very best of everything there is in life. And here are some still photos. If you haven't already done so, I would appreciate it if you will subscribe to this lovely little tiny channel that I'm trying to grow. And till next time, take care, stay well, and I hope to see you soon. Bye everyone.